Hi, welcome to another EV blab. This one comes from the EV blog forum from a user called Stevie G, and he asks about the new uh, Rigol DS 1074Z, or more specifically, the MSO 10. 74Z, uh, which has the mixed signal capability, MSO, all the 16 digital uh, channels with the probes, and turns it into a mixed signal scope. And he asks, is it worth paying the extra money for that mixed signal capability? And, well, it's a really interesting question, so let's take a look at it. Now, I don't have a uh, MSO 1074Z to actually show you, but it doesn't mean we can't uh, discuss it and come to a bit of a conclusion here. Now, this, if you haven't seen my previous videos, is by far the best bang per buck scope on the market at 399 US dollars, or at least at the uh, entry low end um, uh, range of things anyway. So, uh, 399 US dollars, fantastic value. But the MSO, to get that, you can't just upgrade uh, this one, you can't hack it. You've got to physically buy the 16 MSO channels uh, built into it. There's physically extra hardware and you get the probes as well. And you've got to step up the 70 megahertz model and it's uh, over $800. Uh, dollars. We're talking US dollars here. So it's more than double for that 16 channel logic analyzer. Is it worth it? More than 400 bucks. Well, Look, you can buy, you know, one of these Saley logic, cheap Saley logic analyzers, pretty good USB uh, based um, scope, just a, you know, a slow speed scope and they're dirt cheap. You can, and there's tons of others on the market like uh, logic analyzers galore, take your pick. And most of them are pretty much under like $400, there's no shortage of picks. Is it better to get one of these or whether or not to buy a separate logic analyzer? Well. I've always said that MSO scopes are the duck's guts, they really are. Mixed signal scopes, there's nothing like being able, this one does have mixed signal capability, 16 digital channels. Um, there's nothing like having the time correlation on the screen, by time correlation I mean being able to see, uh, to trigger off your analog channels and then being able to see your digital channels at the same time. So maybe a digital signal in your circuit caused uh, you know, something to happen, or maybe something in your analog power supply, for example, there's a hiccup in there or something like that, and that is upsetting your digital channel. So it's uh, it's really good to be able to just do it on the one instrument in the one scope. So don't get me wrong, MSO scopes are really the duck's guts, and well, you know, if money's not an object, then yeah, just buy the MSO capability for this. It's all right, but. There's a few things you need to consider about whether or not it's good value for money. Because if you're buying this scope, you are looking for bang per buck for value for money. Now, uh, the advantage of the MSO uh, scopes, we're talking about this one here, is that yes, it does have a really high uh, sample rate. For example, this one is uh, one gig. If one gig samples per second on the digital channels, which is really quick. If you're uh, looking at only eight channels, it gets halved to 500 meg samples per second if you go for all 16 channels. And uh, it's got a lot of memory, standard 12 meg memory, which uh, is for eight channels, halved to six meg for uh, all 16 channels. And that's a decent amount of memory. So you might think speed wise and memory wise, this is a pretty good logic analyzer, but uh, it's not that great. Actually, well, the sample rate's really good, right? The sample rate's fantastic, but most digital stuff you're doing these days is, it's not like it was 20 years ago, where, you know, you had a whole board full of hundreds of chips, and they were all interconnected, all digitally interconnected, and you had to debug them all. Now it's all like serial buses and things like that. So, typically, when you look at logic analyzers, you're looking at doing serial buses, SPI, SPI buses, I squared C buses, you know, CAN buses maybe, you know, things like that, one wire buses. So, you know, often you don't need those eight or 16 logic channels that you normally would. Now, uh, the other thing is, is that logic analyzers aren't as good as scopes. If you really want to look at a signal properly, you need to use an oscilloscope channel, a proper one of these four channels on your scope here. You've got to use those. They're, they're better than a logic analyzer because a logic analyzer will only give you a one or a zero below a certain fixed threshold. And it doesn't take signal integrity into it. So if you haven't probed your circuit properly, you can get dodgy results on your logic analyzer and not know where those faults are coming from. And you can chase red herrings 
until the cows come home. It can be horrible. So you don't want to get caught in that trap. So if you if you can, what you ideally what you'd want is a 16 channel oscilloscope that would be this long and you could hook up all 16 channels so you can actually see what your digital signal actually looks like. So that cannot be beat. Now the killer thing about this scope at $399, not that it's $399, is that it's four channels with $399 for $399. And as I said, we are uh, these days you often debugging digital uh, logic analyzer. Typically, you might be debugging serial interfaces. Well, you've already got four channels. If you've got a spy bus, that's three channels, and you've still got one channel left over to uh, trigger and, and correlate off an analog channel as well. So really, you've already got a kick-ass four-channel logic analyzer in here with the built-in serial decoding as well. Yeah, it's a software option. It's like 120 bucks or something. Or if you happen to have hacked your scope, uh, you might already have it. So it's a pretty darn good, useful logic analyzer. Fantastic logic analyzer for $399. You already got it. You don't need the mixed signal capability, it's only if you need those additional channels. And with four analog channels, well, you know, your requirements have to be a bit niche these days to require those extra 16 digital channels, in my opinion. Anyway, now, it's not all uh, uh, roses with uh, this. Yeah, it's fast. Yes, it's got, got a decent amount of memory, but that memory does not have real-time sample compression in these scopes. So might sound like a lot of memory if you've got 24 meg in this might sound like a lot but you can chew up that real quick if you're at a fast sample rate so if you've got a, a digital signal that you're trying to a logic signal that you're trying to capture on your logic analyzer you've got 24 meg of memory it might sound like a lot but if you've got one packet over here one packet over here and lots of dead space between them or just lots and lots of packets and you want to look at all those packets and capture them all at once 24 meg ain't actually a lot. So a logic analyzer with what's uh, called, well, generically called uh, real-time uh, hardware compression takes out all those dead times so it makes better use, like segment and memory does in these analog scopes, but that's on the analog channels. On the digital channels, you don't have that, like you can get on a standalone uh, logic analyzer. If you buy that, it can make much more effective use of memory. Or if you've got one of these uh, USB Sally uh, logic analyzers, for example, yes, they're quite slow. Okay, it's not the one gig sample per second. It's only like limited to the USB speed, uh, which this one's a USB 2, so it's limited to like 20 meg or, uh, or something like that, 20 meg samples per second, but good enough for most serial buses these days, and it's got an infinite amount of memory because it's hooked up to your computer so you know you can stream your you know terabytes of hard drive space or whatever you got so fantastic and you can get those really cheaply or you can get you know one of these uh, type ones this one doesn't have hardware uh, compression but other ones in similar price range for under 400 bucks do have hardware sample compression oh my goodness so really uh, these aren't the duck's guts in terms of logic analyzers so you don't have that hardware compression and the other thing you don't have which is a biggie logic analyzers have uh, what's called timing analysis and state analysis with these MSOs you do not get state analysis ie you can't feed in an external clock and then trigger and then sample use that external clock as your sampling point it's not often done these days but that's an advantage of these uh, USB, uh, well a real logic analyzer is that you've got the state analysis built in. You can feed in an external clock, use that as your sample clock, so all your timing is in synchronization with the product you're trying to test. You don't get that with MSOs, right? So there's two major disadvantages there uh, with an MSO compared to one of these. The other one is that these screens, they're really, really cramped. I mean, you try and jam 16 channels on there, right, of your digital stuff plus your four analog stuff and you're really pushing brown stuff up a hill with a pointy stick. You really are trying to fit it all on this screen. This is one area, logic analyzers is one area where hooking up to a PC has massive 
advantages, absolutely massive advantages. You have a massive screen. You've got your mouse as a better user interface for it. You've got often much better search capabilities. You've got the keyboard, the mouse, everything else much better than trying to do it on poking around on an oscilloscope. So while the mixed signal capability in these scopes is very, very handy, they are very fiddly to use compared to a PC-based logic analyzer, unlike a digital storage scope, if you're using this as a regular analog oscilloscope, it's easier to use your knobs and everything else than the PC. It's the opposite for your logic analyzer. So, what do I recommend after all that? Well, I recommend that you don't spend the extra money on the logic analyzer, uh, the MSO upgrade for this, unless you have a specific need or you're really, you know, or money's not much of an object. But if you're paying, if you're buying one of these, money's probably a bit of a concern for you. So you're better off getting one of these, using, uh, getting the software option for the serial decode. You've already got a fantastic four channel serial uh, debugging logic analyzer built in. And, well, just get one of these. You know, if you need to, um, you need a lot more uh, memory, for example, infinite amount of memory, sample compression or state analysis, get one of these external logic analyzers if and when you need it. And you might be thinking, well, I really, really love the time correlation of the mixed signal scope on here, being able to uh, time correlate between your analog and your digital channels. And if you buy one of these external USB ones, well, you're going to lose that capability. Well. No, you aren't. Check out the back here. Ta-da! Trigger output. We have a trigger output there, so you can feed that trigger output to the input, one of the input channels to this, uh, to your whatever logic analyzer you've got. It doesn't need to have an external trigger input even, just one of your regular input channels. Set that to trigger in, and bingo! You can caption, you can get time correlation, not as convenient because you've got to use the scope and you know and, and a con separate computer screen and you can't you know like overlay them as easily unless you like imported the data and wrote a script or did something weird like that. Anyway, you can still do it. You still get pre and post trigger information with your uh, logic analyzers. Still get your pre and post trigger data here, and you know exactly where your trigger point is on the screen. And well. It's not that hard, so it's not quite as convenient as the MSO built into these, but you can still do it. Beauty. So there you go. I hope I've answered your question very lengthily there. Um, Stevie G. Yeah, it's just, I don't really think it's worth it. As cool as I think mixed signal scopes are, I really love them, I really do. But yeah, I think there's better value to be had by just buying the base model scope and getting a separate logic analyzer. So there you go. How long did I waffle on for? This was supposed to be a quick blab. I'm glad I didn't have that timer thing that I was uh, supposed to do. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Um, by the way, some people have said um, I don't ever advertise the air power. It's my radio show I do with Chris Gabble every week. I've been doing it for like four and a half years or something. If you're not aware of it, the air power and electronics radio show, or podcast, whatever you want to call it, um, every week. So there you go, theairpower.com, linked in down below. And also, I don't mention enough either, I'm very active on Twitter. So if you want my just daily rants on anything, or just my family holiday snaps, it is my personal account as well as an EV log account, so you get my personal politics and everything on the uh, Twitter account, as well as some electronics and other stuff that's happening around the lab occasionally, dumpster dives or whatever, I'm always taking and tweeting photos. So there you go, follow me on Twitter, on EEVblog. I don't use that Facebook bullshit. Nah, forget it. Anyway, catch you next time.